What's going on everybody? So in this video, we are going to be covering some of my best tips when it comes to cold calling. And these are gonna be the best tips that I have collected over the years, working in sales, starting my own business as well, and also helping thousands of students around the world with their cold calls. So you definitely don't wanna miss out on this one. Now, before we go ahead and get started, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and let's go ahead and get started. The first tip I have for you is how do you start your conversations over the phone, especially if you don't have any experience without coming off as too salesy, right? You don't want to call someone and be like, hey, John, I'm from Oracle. Do you have a minute to talk? And they're going to be like, ooh, this is a cold call for sure, right? People are smarter these days. They can tell when you're trying to sell them. And like, I know when somebody calls me randomly out of the blow, hello, Mr. Dang, is this Mr. Dang, sir? It's like, you already know what's going to happen, right? They're just going to try to sell you something. Hey, you know, do you want to upgrade your cable or whatever? And it's like, come on, man. So here's what you do if you don't want to sound salesy. First of all, you kind of have to have a script. You have to know exactly line by line, word by word, what you're going to say. But I will also add that when you're more experienced, it does not even matter what you say. It's more about your tonality. If you are able to master your tonality, you can say many different variations of opening lines. A lot of them will work for you because people make a judgment on whether or not they like you based on their first impression and their first impression over the phone. I would say 70% based on how you sound, 30% on the words that you actually say. For me, if I do a cold calling, I could be like, hey, John, this is Patrick from Oracle. How are you doing today? Hey, John, this is Patrick from Microsoft. Did I catch you at a bad time? So those are the two that I would typically go for. Some people might be like, oh, that doesn't work. Did I catch you at a bad time? That doesn't make any sense. Honestly, it doesn't really matter what you say. Like I said, it's about your tonality. What typically will happen is that if you get your tonality right, people will say like, sure, what's up? That's it. It's not really like a hard commitment. They're not agreeing to anything. They're just, it's like a micro agreement where they're just like, okay, well, what's going on, right? Let's say I said the same exact line, but I changed my tonality. Uh, hey, John, how's it going? This is Patrick from Microsoft. Okay, how do you feel? It's totally different, right? Words are exactly the same. Obviously, I'm exaggerating for dramatic effect, but the how you sound is going to be very important. Usually for me, if you just come off as cool and confident, that typically works, right? So I'll just be like, hey, it's Patrick from Oracle. Did I catch you at a bad time? Hey, I'm a little lost. Um, do you mind if I take a second to tell you what I'm calling? You see the difference there, right? It just sounds like I'm someone that should be trusted. And if you get that feeling across to somebody, then they're much more likely to want to talk to you. Another tip I have for you is that actually the last line that I said, I'm a little lost. Do you mind if I take a second to tell you why I'm calling? The reason why that one particularly works very well is because it's very hard for someone to say no to that because it's such an easy, simple thing you're asking. And the second thing is it's hard to say no to somebody who's asking for help. If you're at the airport and you're lost and then your luggage is everywhere and you just drop your coffee on the floor. If you're looking like a mess in the airport and you drop your coffee, it spilled all over your shirt and things like that. You ask an employee at an airport, hey, you know, can you help me find my flight? I don't know where it is. 99.9% .9 they're going to help you out, right? They cannot say no. They work there. It's their job. But even if you ask a stranger, they will probably help you out as well. So asking for help is one of the psychological strategies that you can employ to get people to want to help you and listen to what you have to say, especially on a cold call. What if you cold call somebody, they say they're busy right now, call back later. What do you do in those situations, right? Because it happens to a lot of people are busy. What you want to do is you want to get them to commit to a future time when they will actually talk to you on the phone. So if I call someone, hey, John, this is Patrick from Oracle. Did I catch you at a bad time? And they might say, yeah, absolutely. You actually caught me at a bad time. I'm about to run into a meeting. What's up? Say, so, hey, listen, if you're about to go into a meeting right now, do you mind if we go ahead and schedule a time to talk about X, Y, Z? Uh, it would only take five minutes to see if it's a good fit to work with each other. By the end of the call, if it's a fit, great. If not, totally cool. How's that sound to you? They'll probably just be like, sure, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever, right? And you'll be like, okay, well, does uh, Wednesday sound good? On my calendar, 10 a.m. is looking pretty open. How about you? And they'll probably say, uh, yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and just book it for 10 a.m. on Wednesday. And then you'll be like, all right, cool. 10 a.m. Wednesday, I'll send you an email to make sure to follow up. And then I'll talk to you then. Cool, done. That's essentially what you would do if somebody was busy on the phone. You just get them to agree to a short five-minute meeting later on, right? And that five-minute meeting might turn into a 15-minute meeting. It could turn into an hour meeting, depending on the situation. Maybe they're really into it. But the whole goal is you set another time on when you will schedule a meeting. Don't say you will call back in one day or three days or whatever because they don't want to talk to you. So if you schedule a meeting, there's a lot more commitment. And then if you kind of quickly explain why there's a meeting, then it makes it more enticing, right? So there's a reason for why someone should come. You can't just say like, hey, I want to talk to you because I want to talk to you. You have to give a reason. It could be something like, I want to talk to you because I really think that you guys should be advertising on YouTube. And I see you guys are advertising on Facebook pretty heavily. And I think you can get similar results. Of course, you have to have context depending on what problem you're actually solving and you're kind of like solving the 
the problem before you're talking to them, but you can kind of make an educated guess. But that's essentially what I would do. Set a future date on when you want to talk to them in the future. Let's say you're a new salesperson and you're constantly getting rejected left and right. Everyone's saying, no, 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 no. What do you do? First thing you have to understand that no is okay. Okay, because like if you do poorly in your sales role, it doesn't mean you're worse as a person, right? You can feel great as a human being, but not be good at sales. That's cool. Separate those things first, right? Your career, your job, your sales performance is not the same as who you are as a human being. Once you're able to do that, then you'll understand that sales is separate from your everyday life. Imagine you are just like a chess player and you're just not that good at chess. Just because you lose in chess, it doesn't make you less of a person. It just means you're not good in chess. So same with sales. So first you have to emotionally detach yourself. Of course, there's always gonna be emotion, but try to separate as much as possible so that when people do say no, you don't feel bad as a person, but it's just like, hey, it didn't work out. The second thing is you have to look at averages, right? So at your company or whatever, understand what is the average success rate. So if it's cold calling, for example, if people have a 10% chance that someone will actually buy something, Thing. Well, if you have a 10% chance as well, that means you're getting nine no's out of 10. So that actually might be good. If you're doing bad, you have to ask relative to who. And if let's say you're doing bad, but actually you're doing much better than average, then yeah, people are gonna say no, but you're doing way better than everybody else. So it's like, you're fine, right? And so always understand that. It's, it's quite an interesting theory, right? Like something cannot be hot unless you have something relatively cold, right? So it's, it's the same thing, something cannot be bad, unless this it's relative to something that's good. Are you really doing bad? You have to see. Now, let's say you are doing bad relative to the average. What do you do then? I think you just have to understand it's part of the game. Going through pain and trauma and like all this bad stuff in your life actually make you a lot stronger if you're able to learn from it. So if you're getting a bunch of no's, listen to your call recordings with your manager or a peer or someone you look up to and be like, hey, you know, I really wanna improve, but for some reason, everyone's saying no. Is it okay if you listen in on my calls with me to see what I'm doing wrong? Most people, especially if you're working at a good company, will say, yeah, of course, why not? And then from there, they might say, hey, you're doing this wrong, you're openly lying, it's not good. You got to work in your tonality. You take those notes and make those changes and try again. Everything is just trial and error. You try it. It doesn't work. You try again. You think of a reason for why it didn't work. And then you find a reason why it could work. And then you try the new thing. And then eventually you will get better as long as you keep your head up and your attitude up, right? Now, if you don't get better, I think you really have to understand whether or not you're cut out for sales. You know, every situation is different. Personally, for me, I think most people, they can learn the ability to sell. If you want to learn everything you need to know about cold calling, whether it's your opening line, what to say in the meeting, how to close a deal, or even how to leave a voice Voicemail. make sure to check out my course sales legacy where we are going to teach you everything you need to know when it comes to b2b sales whether you're selling tech consulting you name it we got it so if you want to master cold calling check out saleslegacy.com to learn more we also have a free one hour training give you a little taste in case you are interested in it, and we're going to learn some of my most powerful sales techniques there so saleslegacy.com make sure to check it out so with that said that is everything we have to cover for this video and i will see you in the next one.